Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Junior Church. Today, we are going to be looking at three components of worship, just like we always do at Junior Church. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our confession of sin, which is a part of our liturgy. And then the second part we're going to be doing is we're going to work on our catechism questions, and we have the same set of catechism questions for, for this month. And then we're going to have our Bible lesson. So let's go ahead and get right into things. So last time, as we talked about our confession of sin, I had you guys do something. I had you guys stand up, and I had you guys act out what that looks like. So I had you guys face one direction and walk that direction, which I said, this direction is where sin is. And when we confess our faith, we admit that we've been walking and we've been wanting sin and we ask God for forgiveness. And what we do, we repent and we do a 180 degree turn away from that sin and towards God. And we start following God instead. So today for our confession of sin, I'm going to have you guys do something similar. And this is actually something that people for a long time would do when they would pray. So let me, guys, let me show you guys what people would do as they would pray uh, for, for a long time in our history. So something people in the church would do and have done for a long time is they would get down on their knees just like this when they would pray. And you know, in the Bible, it often talks about your posture when you pray. And posture is the way you're sitting, the way you're standing, just basically the way your body is. And so that's really important when we pray, and that's really important when we confess our sin. And you know what? When we get down on our hands and knees like this, and we fold our hands, and, and we bow our heads, and we confess our sin to the Lord, it's a sign of humility. It's a sign of saying, God, you are the one that has all power. You are the only one that is good. I am, I am small, and I am in your hands, and my life is yours. It's a way of showing God how much you care and how much you are, are saddened by your, your sin. So as we confess our sin today, as we're learning about confessing sin, of sin, I encourage you guys, boys and girls, to, to kind of get down on your knees like this. You can even you know, bow down or however, just get low when you pray and you ask God for forgiveness of sins. So let's all go ahead and do that to get together as we confess our sins. Dear Lord, you are so good and so holy, and yet we continue to do the things you tell us not to do. So Lord, we get down and we get low before you and we think and we acknowledge our sin and we ask God that you will forgive us of our sin. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so that is a great way that we can learn to confess our sin to God. So now we're going to work on our catechism questions. So last time I taught junior church this month, I had you guys make cards with your catechism questions. And I had you write the question on one, keep the other side blank, and then on a whole separate card, write the answer with the other side blank. Because we're playing a matching game. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that again. And this is a great way that we can learn our catechism questions. And we are learning catechism questions number 26 through 30. So here's what you guys can do to memorize these catechism questions. Make your cards like that for each of your questions. Maybe some of you still have them. And you can lay them out on the floor like this. Now we're going to play a matching game. All right, so now that you have them laid out, let me scoot them back a little bit further so that you can see all of them. Okay. So now that they're all laid out, we're going to hop on one and start with that one. And we're going to see which one this is. Okay, so this is 27, the answer to 27. And it's no, he sinned against God. So we have to find, try to find the question, question 27. So let's leave that face up. Let's go over here. Let's see. Oh, I found it. All right, awesome. So this is the question, the first part, which is, did Adam keep the covenant of life? The answer, no, he sinned against God. So there we go. We got a match, and now we can put that one away, and we can keep working on our other questions and answers. Boys and girls, I encourage you to memorize these catechism questions by playing this fun matching game.
So today for our Bible lesson, we are going to learn about two really important people in the Bible that come from a small book called the book Esther, which is in the Old Testament. So we're going to be learning about a person named Esther and, and a person she was related to named Mordecai and the very, very important role that they had played in the life of the Jews. So one of the first things we are going to draw is we're going to draw a picture of Esther because the Bible tells us that Esther was very beautiful. And this, she lived during the time when God's people, after being taken into, into exile because they didn't listen to God, they started going back to the land of Jerusalem. And many of the Jews had returned, but you know what? Actually, there were quite a few people who still stayed in the land that they were taken to. And that's where Mordecai and Esther lived. They still lived in Persia, in a land with foreign people that were not the Jews, like God's people. So there were lots of Jewish people, God's people, who lived in the land of Persia with other people. So this was always an interesting way for God's people to live because they lived with a different kind of people. Now, we're talking about a guy named Mordecai and his cousin Esther. And Esther was an orphan, so Mordecai raised Esther like she was his own daughter. And Mordecai taught her to trust in the one true God and not the idols of Persia. Now, when Esther had grown, the king of Persia wanted a new queen. He sent officers through the land to find beautiful young women who were taken to the palace. And the king would choose one of them to be his new queen. So let's go ahead and draw a, a crown that looks like a, a queen's crown and make it have lots of nice shiny jewels on it. We can go in circles like that with little dots in the middle. So the king of Persia was trying to find a new queen. And Esther was one of the girls who was chosen to be taken before the king. Now when Esther was brought before the king, guess what? He liked her the best. And Esther was crowned the new queen. That is amazing because Esther was a Jew, one of God's people from the land of Israel. She was different than everyone else in the land of Persia. But you know what? God was preparing Esther to take part in some really big plans. Now, there was a man named Haman who was a really important, important person in the land of Persia. And he would work a lot with the king in making those big decisions. And you know, in the land of Persia, people would often bow before Haman. And so we are going to go ahead and draw a person bowing down. And you know, this was in, during the time of Esther and Mordecai, this was a sign of respect. People would bow down before important people. And so they would wear cloaks like this. Maybe not the best drawing, but you can act like they're bowing down. So people would bow down before the king of Persia and before this guy named Haman, who was also a really important official. And you know what? Everyone would, would do this but the time came for Mordecai to, to bow down, and Mordecai did not like Haman very much. So Mordecai would not bow down before him. And you know what? This made Haman really, really angry. And he hated Mordecai and all of the Jews, and Haman told the king how much trouble all the Jews were because Mordecai was a was a Jew. And so all of a sudden you start to see a really, the really important person named Haman getting really angry against Mordecai and, and all the Jewish people who were God's people. 
And so what Haman did is he tried to get the king on his side and say, hey, look at these horrible people who aren't bowing down before us. They are not showing us respect. So Haman asked the king to make a law that the Jews should all be killed. Whoa, that is one seriously bad law. So Esther heard about this, and Esther was afraid to let the king know she was a Jew. So Esther was a queen, married to the king, and she's like, I'm, I'm a Jewish person, and all my people are about to be killed by this law. So she and Mordecai decided to keep it a secret since the king did not know she was a Jew. So the king decided to let Haman write the law, and he gave Haman his signet ring to seal it. Oh boy, so this, this means that, thing, that this law is about to be put into effect, which is not good because all God's people then would be killed in this new law. So let's go ahead and make a ring like this. Okay, and we can make it like that. So the king gave Haman, this really horrible person, this ring to say, all right, go ahead, make this law and have all the Jews be killed on a certain day. And this was really, really bad because these are God's people. The people that God made all these promises to, to bring a savior, to, to be a light to all the nations, they were all going to be killed. So when Haman would use this signet reel ring and stamp it on the law, that meant that this law could never be changed. Whoa. So all the Jews would ask each other, what have we ever done to deserve this? This is horrible. What are we going to do? And you know what? Mordecai, that important person who is related to Esther, he was very, very sad. So we're going to draw a picture of Mordecai being sad. And Mordecai was very, very worried about what was gonna to happen to God's people. So he cried and was sad because he was worried about what was gonna to happen to God's people. And so you can even draw some tear, teardrops. Mordecai was very sad by what was about to happen. So Mordecai told Esther about the law and Esther would not escape being killed just because she was queen. And you know what? She was going to be killed too. So Mo Mo Mordecai told her that she had to talk to the king about this horrible law. So you guys see what was happening? The fate of all God's people, Jewish people who live in the land of Persia was on Esther. She, the decisions that she made would change the fate of all of God's people. Wow, can you imagine being in that place when if you made the right decisions, all of your people would be saved, but if you were too scared and didn't make the right decision, all your people would be killed. Man, imagine how Esther must have felt. So this was something Esther faced and she knew she had to do something. But you know what, there was a problem. If a person went into the throne room to talk to the king without being invited, and the king didn't hold out his scepter to that person, it meant death. So people just couldn't run in and say, oh, hi, Mr. King, I want to I wanna talk to you and tell you all these things. No, there were laws, and the king had a scepter that only certain people could talk. So we're going to draw a nice scepter. And uh, so this... Scepter meant if, if people were not approved, then they would be, be killed. Wow. Man, crazy times. But you know what? Mordecai was sure that, that Esther had become queen for this very reason, to go before the king and plead with the king for, for God's people, the Jews. And only someone 
And only someone the king liked more than Haman could plead for the Jews. So it was really important that Esther did this. And you know what? It would have been easy for Esther to be too afraid to go talk to the king, but she was willing to trust God even if she meant, even if that meant that she had to die. So Esther fasted for three days, and instead of eating, she spent time praying to God. Then Esther dressed up, maybe for the last time, and she slipped into the throne room, her heart pounding with fear, so worried. What was going to happen to Esther? Was she going to live and survive? Was the queen... Oh, you guys can draw a better heart than I can. Let me draw a better heart than that. That one's not much better. But you can draw a heart like that, like it's beating. So Esther was so nervous going to the king. Is he going to listen? Is he going to save the people? Or is he going to have me killed? Just like everyone else. Her life and the lives of her people depended on what she would do. And you know what happened? The king held out his scepter. He said, you are welcome here. And that she could talk to him. So she touched the scepter and the king and Haman, she touched it and invited the king and Haman to two feasts. At the second feast, Esther told the king that oh, there was an enemy who wanted to kill her and her people. And the king wanted to know who this enemy was. And guess what Esther did? She said, look over there. She pointed to Haman and said, the enemy is Haman. So the king got rid of Haman and put Mordecai in his place. The king made a new law saying that on the day the Jews were to be killed, they could defend themselves. The Jews' enemies were quickly defeated, and the Jews living in Persia were saved because Esther was ready to obey God. So let's draw lots of happy faces. God's people were saved because Esther was brave and courageous, and she talked to the king. Now, this story is really important in the Bible because Esther did something that saved God's people. The whole fate, the whole future of God's people depended on what Esther would do. Man, what a big responsibility for Esther to make the right decision. And you know what? This shows us that God keeps his promises. Right? Because God made promises to those people that, that the Savior, Jesus Christ, would come through those people. So God did not let his people perish. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining me for Junior Church. And remember to work on those catechism questions and work on memorizing those this month as we are memorizing questions 26 through 30. And also remember this week from our Bible lesson that even though things happen and scary things happen to God's people, that God remembers his people, that he is with them and that he keeps his promises to them. And that includes us, that God is going to keep his promises to us always. And we can trust that he's going to do that. So thank you and hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a great week.